not for victories or defeats in battle or in politics, but for our contribution to the human spirit. From the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in Washington, the 16th Annual Kennedy Center Honors, a celebration of the performing arts, honoring Johnny Carson, Arthur Mitchell, George Schulte, Stephen Sondheim, Marion Williams. An evening of tribute and entertainment by their distinguished colleagues. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Walter Cronkite. Good evening. The performing artists who have made the greatest contribution to our national life. And tonight, we welcome the fourth president and first lady who have offered their support and their presence to these proceedings. We <laughs> we thank you, President and Mrs. Clinton, for uh, being here with us on this occasion that bears witness to the ideals of another young president for whom this Kennedy Center is named. <laughs> On this signature wall behind me are the names uh, of the uh, honorees who have gone before. To this company of grace, we now add five others who have been nominated by their peers and elected by the Kennedy Center's trustees. A subversive musical genius from New York who transformed Broadway with a one-man revolution in the musical theater. A son of Harlem, who decided that he wanted to do in classical ballet what Jackie Robinson was doing in baseball. A virtuoso from Eastern Europe, who gave America the world's most acclaimed orchestra and gave the world new readings of its music. And a cool kid from Nebraska with a cockeyed smile who became the most durable performer in the whole history of television. And a daughter of the church who shook the walls with her gospel sound and whose contributions shook the very foundations of popular music. A few hours ago, just a few blocks from here, President and Mrs. Clinton welcomed our honorees to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. It's a special pleasure for the President and the Vice President and Tipper Gore and I to be able on this first of our opportunities to host the Kennedy Center Honors, to be part of this tradition that means so much to our country. And it is my particular pleasure and privilege to introduce the President of the United States. Thank you very much. President Kennedy once said that a nation reveals itself by the people it chooses to honor and to remember. The five artists we honor tonight reveal the variety and brilliance of our American spirit. They demonstrate the imagination, the determination, the passion for excellence that raises talent to art. Each of these five artists, Johnny Carson, Arthur Mitchell, George Schulte, Stephen Sondheim, and Marion Williams, has, in his or her own way, brought joy and a genuine new dimension to our culture. So on behalf of all the American people, I thank each one of you for the work you have done so vigorously and so passionately to fulfill your God-given ability, and in so doing, to keep alive our nation's creative spirit. Thank you very much. Kennedy Center Honors, sponsored by Best Friends from MCI. Now your most important calls could be your least expensive. And by Acura, some things are worth the price. The new chairman of the National Endowment for the Arts, Jane Alexander.
At the age of three, she joined the choir of the Holiness Church in Miami and set her heart on becoming a traveling gospel singer. And she did more than that. Marion Williams became the golden voice of gospel's golden age. The New York Times music critic called her the bee's knees. <laughs> the equal of any blues singer alive. Marion Williams has become a one-woman seedbed of some of the most authentically American music of our time. That soaring voice swept beyond gospel to become a shaping force in the development of soul music, rhythm and blues, and rock and roll. Ms. Williams, your star rises tonight as a grateful nation honors you and your shining contribution to the arts in America. I was young, but I recall this was the black way of singing. Singing song. Black gospel was my mother's joy. As I sat upon her knees in the Hers is a great, big American voice that sings of hope and redemption and deliverance. Gospel music was born out of the numbing misery of hard lives. And then on the seventh day, they sang. Gospel music is nothing less than the ecstatic shout of souls set free at last. In the 40s, the joyful noise went north and east and west. It was gospel's golden age. The Clara Ward singers invited her to sing back up. Hard singing was the order of the day, and no one sang harder than Marion. Langston Hughes was so enamored of her voice, he created Gospel's first song play and brought Marion to Broadway. She traveled for the State Department, carrying her songs to Africa and Europe. Whole nations rocked to her hand-clapping, Bible-belting, black church beat. A little bit saint and a little bit showman, wrote a critic. When Marion sings about God, you want to sign up. She turned down offer after offer to cross over to pop music. Her answer was always the same. I've sung only of the Lord, she said, since I was three. That's all the reward I ask. Amazing grace, Marion. Amazing grace.
Ladies and gentlemen, Little Richard. I want to say, Marion Williams, I loved you so much. You know, I'm from Macon, Georgia. But if it wasn't for you, I would have never been a star. I got that, woo, I got that from you. God bless you because, honey, you was born to sing the gospel. You were born to sing the gospel. I was born to sing the gospel. I was born to sing the gospel. And I sure do love my God. She was born.
Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, Mr. James D. 